Hello to all students. I hope you are doing fine. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss gene therapy. Gene therapy is, in, is a procedure or mechanism in which is involved in the insertion of healthy genes into the cells to treat a particular disease. As you know that due to the mutation, different kinds of diseases uh, we are facing like thalassemia, leukemia, sickle cell anemia, uh, hypercholesterolemia, SCID and a very long list, a very long list of the diseases which are genetic diseases. These diseases are not able to be uh, treated with the conventional methods of the treatment. We cannot prevent these diseases, we cannot uh, uh, treat these diseases by vaccination or immunization, we cannot use antibiotics or other conventional method. So the only method left is gene therapy. Gene therapy is a method in which the defective genes, the diseases which are caused by mutations in the genes, the defective genes are removed from the cells and new healthy genes are inserted into the cells to cure that particular disease. So there are two types of cells which are used in this technique, gene therapy. There are two types of body cells. One are somatic cells. Somatic cells are general body cells which are usually non-reproductive and these cells are mostly used in gene therapy and this therapy is known as somatic cell gene therapy which are we are going to discuss in this video lecture. The other method is germ cell uh, gene therapy. Germ, th germ cell gene therapy involves the sexual cell like sperms and eggs and the genetic material is, uh, genes uh, uh, are manipulated. But these methods are not usually uh, adopted by the scientists in different uh, countries due to the ethical issues uh, with the, uh, these uh, gametes. So the only method left that is known as somatic cell gene therapy. Now there are different uh, uh, two types of somatic cell gene therapy. One is known as ex vivo gene therapy and the other one is in, in vivo gene therapy. In ex vivo gene therapy we take out the body cells from different organs of the body and insert genetic material into them by in a test tube or in a petri dish outside the body. So that is why this method is known as ex vivo gene therapy while in in vivo gene therapy we use uh, body cell inside the body and the gen genetic material DNA genes are inserted into the cells of the working body cells. We are going to discuss uh, uh, these two methods with one example each. So first of all I am going to discuss ex vivo gene therapy and during ex vivo gene therapy I have taken an example of a disease which is known as severe combined immunodeficiency disease. It is a disease just like an AIDS in which body's immune system totally manipulated. So this disease is usually found in newborn babies or uh, young children. In severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome, there is a, there is a lack of an enzyme which is known as AD adenosine deaminase, an enzyme which is responsible for the maturation of white blood cells, especially T lymphocyte and B lymphocytes. B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte are specialized white blood cells which are responsible for the immunity of our body. So when they are not mature, they cannot work properly due to the deficiency of enzyme and this enzyme is not produced due to the mutation in the gene uh, and uh, as a result of that, the children or the patient suffers from severe life-threatening infections which can lead to the death of the patient. So we are uh, trying to uh, treat this disease with the help of gene therapy by ex vivo gene therapy. So first of all, this is, uh, this is an arm of, so there are many different types of uh, cells which can be used for gene therapy. Some scientists use stem cells. They are important because they can be, uh, they can uh, multiply inside the body. Some scientists use white blood cells and some scientists also use some other type of body cells. So I am going to take white blood cells which are defected and we are going to remove their defective gene and going to insert their 
in a normal gene into the into the cells so first of all in the first step i am going to take a lymphocyte which is a t lymphocyte and it is defected lymphocyte because due to the mutation its gene is not working properly and is due to the defective gene this cell is not producing ada enzyme which is responsible for its maturation so to change the gene uh, because the cells are too small physically it's not possible to insert into genes into them so first of all we have to decide a uh, take a vector usually we take a vector which is known as retrovirus as you know that retroviruses infect white blood cells so first of all i am going to take a normal human ada gene which i have taken from a normal person and uh, for that i have to isolate the cells of the normal person then take out the chromosome then dna then uh, find out the gene and then uh, isolate that gene so this is an isolated human ada gene which is very normal now i am going to insert this piece of dna this piece of gene into the retrovirus which is a vector so this gene will incorporate into the rna as you know that our retroviruses are rna viruses which incorporate into the viral rna and we will uh, prepare so many vectors which contain our choice of gene now in the next step i am going to allow these vectors which are known as retroviruses allowed to infect these white blood cell t lymphocyte which have defective gene inside a dish inside a test tube these retrovirus will infect these white blood cell as you know that retroviruses infect white but if we, the scientist or we we have to be very caref very careful while using these retroviruses usually these retroviruses do not cause any disease but they can cause cancer but we have to be careful that these viruses uh, are not causing any kind of uh, trouble to the patient so when white when these white blood cell defective white blood cells are affected by these retroviruses these retroviruses enter the white blood cell this is a white blood cell and this is the virus virus integrates disintegrate uh, its uh, protein coat inside the cell and its dna is in, released inside the cell so before it enters the nucleus and becomes the part of the white blood cell dna it has to transfer its rna into dna so there is a method which is known as reverse transcription during reverse transcription viral dna is converted into viral viral rna is converted into viral dna after then this dna will enter into the nucleus of the white blood cell and becomes the part of the chromosome of the defected white blood cell when it becomes the part of the defected white blood cell then our choice of gene which is normal ada gene will become the part of this white blood cell now this white blood cell has normal gene for ada enzyme now what we are going to do we are going to insert inject these uh, genetically modified white blood cell t lymphocyte in which normal gene has been inserted into the patient's body when these cells enter inside the body where they uh, express their express themselves and synthesis of ada will start ada enzyme will be produced and these enzyme will cause the maturation of t lymphocyte and b lymphocyte and correction of scid will take place and patient will feel a relief from the life threatening infection and slowly and slowly he will become a normal person so we can use a white blood cell as well as stem cells stem cells can also be used but it depends on the method which are you are adopting in the same way hypercholesterolemia in which uh, cholesterol is filled up in the liver can also be treated in this way now let's look at the second example or second method of the gene therapy which is known as in in vivo gene therapy in vivo gene therapy usually takes place or uh, done inside the body of a person so i have taken an example of a disease which is known as cystic fibrosis in cystic fibrosis patient's lungs are filled with mucus and due to the lack of the transmembrane carriers in the epithelial walls of the alveoli due to the due to this defect patient's lungs are filled with mucus and it uh, causes life threatening infection which lead to the death of the patient there is no treatment for this disease so we have to do a gene therapy 
So this in this method we cannot uh, perform ex vivo gene therapy and we have to do in vivo gene therapy. For in vivo gene therapy first of all we have to take a normal gene. Normal gene can be taken from any normal person. Then what we are going to do then we are going to prepare our molecules which are known as lipoplexes. Lipoplexes are small microscopic vesicles liposome microscopic vesicle which are composed of lipoproteins which are coated with normal genes. In the same way we can use viruses, retroviruses which can also be used as a vector. But at this time we are not using viruses but, uh, but we are using lipoplexes which are liposome microscopic vesicles which contain, which coated with normal gene. Then we are going to insert these uh, liposome in a solution and then this solution will be sprayed or pumped into the nostrils of a patient. This solution will travel from nasal cavity into the trachea and into the lungs where these microscopic vesicles which are coated with normal gene will be enter into the uh, alveoli and where uh, enter into the epithelial cells of the alveoli and normal gene will inserted into the uh, cells of these epithelium. So in this way the transmembrane carriers of the molecule will uh, perform well and, uh, and channels which allow uh, sodium ions and bicarbonate ion they work better and the mucus production will decrease and patient will become little bit uh, relieved from this disease. But this uh, method of treatment does not give 100% cure rate because the lungs are already filled with mucus and there is very little uh, approach of these vesicles into the lungs. So but we, we can try only and the uh, rest of uh, uh, the method can be work or not it's up to the uh, body's condition. So in this way uh, the in vivo gene therapy can only uh, pro be performed with a, speci with a specific organ. If uh, lungs are affected, we can only perform this uh, therapy to only lungs. But it's not going to affect other body organs, unlike uh, ex vivo gene therapy where all body organs can be affected. If uh, there is a problem in the stomach, then we have to do in vivo therapy for stomach. If there is a problem in the heart, we have to do perform in vivo therapy for heart. If there is a problem in liver or pancreas, then we have to perform this method into that particular organ. So in this way, I hope uh, uh, it makes sense and uh, I'll see you in the next lecture. Until then, bye.